Hey y'all, welcome back to Homemade Simple. If we've not met before, I'm Lori. Today, Lane and I are going to go into Walmart and talk about some of the really great, healthy, nutritious, and frugal friendly food items that you can find at your local Walmart and be able to feed your family healthy and nutritious foods while still sticking to your family food budget. Lane is taking a little nap in the car, so let me go wake him up and then we'll run into Walmart and get started. Hey, are you ready to go into Walmart? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Okay, we're in the produce section at Walmart. Sometimes the produce can be a little hit or miss, but a lot of times you can find some really good high quality produce here at Walmart and not have to pay an arm and a leg for it like you would at some of the more regional local grocery stores. Whenever I buy produce, I try to look for high quality. Sometimes the price difference between conventional and organic is just really too much for us to be able to afford. So that's gonna be a choice that you and your family have to make as far as your budget allowances. I'm gonna give you a couple of options and comparisons and let you make your own decisions about what's best for your family. Bananas are always on our list because this is Lane's favorite fruit and one of the very few that he will eat without any trouble. You do not have to be concerned about getting organic unless it's just something that you would prioritize. Thick skinned fruits and vegetables like bananas and avocado are not really going to be a danger with the pesticides. So you can save the money on the bananas and the avocados and put your organic priority on fruits and vegetables that have a very thin membrane, such as strawberries or blueberries. Now, I don't always buy organic strawberries and blueberries. It really depends on the price. The strawberries are a lot higher when you go from conventional to organic. The blueberries are not such a big jump, so maybe this is one where I can make the jump from conventional to organic. But again, if you can clean them off, you're going to be better off eating a conventional fruit rather than an organic cookie or granola bar. So keeping it in perspective about the nutritional value of the food itself and then making the organic or conventional choice based on what your family budget will allow will give you the confidence to know that you're feeding your family good, healthy, nourishing food and not have to worry so much about the different growing practices. So the organically grown strawberries are about six dollars. The conventionally grown ones are about three. My family budget won't allow me to justify the double price to buy the organic versus conventional. So you just have to make that decision for yourself. But as far as my family, I would prefer to have double the nutrients and just be careful about the way that I prepare them and clean them to make sure that they are as safe as possible. But then there's examples like this. So this is a conventionally grown green bell pepper. And I'm not sure if you can see, but it's a little bit wilty and not very fresh looking. And then you have these really huge organically grown bell peppers. This is 86 cents for one. This is $3 for two. and. I really feel like you're gonna get a lot more for your money if you go ahead and buy these two large ones. It's much fresher. I think each bell pepper is like three times the size of this one small one. So you just have to go in with an open mind and make the best decisions that you can make when you're in the store. I think this is an example of when the organic option wins hands down. You also want to pay attention to what is seasonal at the time when you're going to the store. So we really like to eat these small mandarin oranges, but they are getting to the point where they're getting rotten and old because they have been in the refrigerator for a really long time at this point. And it's almost to the end of when you can get really good high quality oranges like this until the next season rolls around. The same is going to be true for all different produce. It's really good for us as consumers to be aware of what produce is in season and not. Look at these watermelons. 
right now, $9 for a watermelon that's probably not going to be ripe anyway, but if we wait until the middle of summer, these same watermelons may be three or four dollars. That's a much better use of our food budget and we won't be disappointed with a sour watermelon. Okay, let's go back to the dairy department and see what kind of things that we can find there that are a really healthy, nutritious option that's going to be good for our budget. But before I forget, I do want to mention an upcoming video that I hope will help us to save tons more on our produce, a beginner's guide to gardening and growing our own fruits and vegetables. I plan to bring that to you very soon, but in preparation for that video, I got some new garden shoes from HiC.com. I found these super cute and comfy gardening shoes that are easy to slide on and off and perfect for working in the garden. This particular style of shoe has several design options, but I just love this floral pattern. The high C gardening shoes are perfect for me running in and out of the house while I'm being a mom and a homesteader at the same time. They're durable and comfortable, and I think they will be perfect for summer gardening. High C has a ton of different options on their website, highc.com. They have boots for the entire family and for all of our different activities from gardening to hunting. Every boot from High C comes with a lifetime warranty and that shows the kind of confidence they have in their product. They have a 100 year warm and dry guarantee so if your boots ever start to leak or your feet ever start getting cold in their boots, they will give you a replacement for 100 years. I have been using my neoprene rain boots for over a year and I absolutely love them. They're comfortable and they keep my feet warm and dry during the rainy and muddy winter season. And as an added bonus, Hussey is offering a 15% discount to the Homemade Simple community. All you have to do is put in the promo code HMS at checkout to receive your discount. I even got Chris a pair of rain boots for his birthday last month and he loves them. They really came in handy this past weekend when we had some dirty farm work to do. So I was glad that he had them ready to use. Be sure to check out all that High C has to offer and maybe you can find a good birthday, Mother's Day, or Father's Day gift for your loved ones. Here's what Chris thought of his boots. How do they feel? They feel real good. They feel real good. Good tread on the bottom. The upper part is soft. It's not hard. It's nice. Happy birthday. Thank you. When we get to the dairy, this is as good a place to start as any. Let's talk about butter options and which one might be the best. So when you're talking about butter, most of the time you're going to think about either the salted or the unsalted options. Those are going to be completely the same except for salt being added. So the only ingredients here are cream and salt. You can do away with the salt if you just want to choose the unsalted one, but then they have added flavors, so I'm not really sure why they do that. You can either go with the Great Value brand or you can step up in price and go to the Lando Lakes. I like to think of these options as pretty simple because you know that Walmart doesn't have like a butter manufacturing facility. Somebody that creates one of these other butter options is going to be the one that packages up this great value butter. So you might as well just go with the great value brand if it's the same quality as the other more expensive options. But all of the options here are not the same. Moving down here, this is gonna be like the margarine options. You have several different choices, but margarine is something that you really wanna try to avoid. And let me show you why. So you can see all of the ingredients list. The first one being vegetable oil, including a lot of GMO oils. This is gonna be a hydrogenated ingredient because remember from last week, hydrogenated oils are oils that are chemically changed to go from liquid to solid. That is very unhealthy for our hearts and something we want to try to avoid. So we don't really wanna choose any of these margarines I am seeing that 
there is an avocado oil. We can see what the ingredients are. It is still gonna be mainly a GMO soybean oil. Those are not gonna be good for us. So in general, we wanna try to avoid all of these options and stick with the 100% dairy butter. Those are gonna be the very best. With the very best option being this grass-fed option, but it's very likely out of most of our budget ranges. So we'll just stick with this great value butter option. When you look here at all of these yogurt options, there are gonna be some that are really excellent options, and then there are gonna be some that you might as well eat a candy bar. So let's talk about what makes a particular yogurt the better choice and what makes another a not so great choice. Okay, so let's talk about what I would consider the best options here at Walmart for yogurt. I'm going to always try to go for the whole milk dairy options. That's gonna be much better for our heart health and it's going to give us a lot more staying power with the amount of fat and calories that are included in each serving. This is my favorite option here. I would go with the vanilla if they have it, but I wouldn't go with this one because it's a zero fat. You see, 10% milk fat is really good. It's gonna give you plenty of protein and plenty of fat to keep you going throughout the morning. This is also a full fat option, which it looks really good. It looks like it's got some whole fruits inside. This would be a really good choice. Um, here is a non-organic whole milk yogurt. Again, this is a really good option. If you wanna add some flavoring at home, this would be really good for a nourishing, healthy breakfast. So when you think about getting good, healthy, nutritious dairy products, the main thing is you wanna check out how much sugar is added and also you want to try, if you can, to avoid all of the low fat or zero fat options. There's no reason for us to be afraid of fat in foods, especially when it is a naturally occurring fat. God knew exactly what he was doing when he created the cow milk the way he did and so for us to consume it just the way it was made without having the fat taken out I think is a really good way for us to sort of make choices as far as health goes. They have a lot of options over here that have caught Lane's attention and I just want to talk a little bit about the ingredients here. What you want to try to avoid is any kind of coloring. Mm. You, you see that they used vegetable and fruit juice for color. That's a really good thing. And this is not a bad choice. It does have some added sugars. But again, if Lane is a dog, but if Lane is willing to consume yogurt, yogurt is a really good choice. But again, I would try to avoid this one because it's low fat. And as opposed to full fat options. Okay, here we are at the egg section of the dairy aisle. And I will say all eggs are gonna be good, high protein options for your family. You can go with the regular white eggs, but I would say a better option would be any kind of cage-free or better yet, free range eggs. Those are gonna be the highest in protein and the highest in minerals. You can find a lot of cage-free options that are not really gonna be pasture-raised options. They do have a couple of free-range options here, but when you look at the cost of 532 for organic free-range eggs, as opposed to right now, these eggs are 264 a dozen. It's not really feasible to pay that for a lot of us. Um, if you can't get your own chickens, I would say try to go with the least expensive cage-free options that you can find.
usually when we think about dairy, the first thing we think about is milk. And so let's talk a little bit about all of the milk choices that we have available and which ones might be the most frugally minded, health conscious options we can find. So let's again make the point and reiterate the fact that we do not want to choose a zero fat milk option. Whenever you choose a zero fat milk option, you have removed all of the fat from the milk and that is going to give us a lot of good staying power for our money. You can see here, even the whole milk is 3.25. I would say that the whole milk I get from my cow is probably closer to 10 or 12%. So you're still getting a pretty low volume of fat whenever you buy store-bought whole milk. So it's again fat is nothing to be afraid of the whole milk in the large gallons are going to be the most economical option 2.7 cents an ounce you could choose a name brand option if you would prefer i don't really know any reason to do that maybe someone else does but i sort of feel like they all come from the same place you do notice that these options are going to expire in maybe two weeks from now but then when you go to the organic options they are going to last until the middle of may so that's going to be a big difference but the reason that they're going to last so much longer is because you can see here they are ultra pasteurized. So let's talk a second about what ultra pasteurization means and whether it's a good choice for us or no. Ultra pasteurization means that the temperature of the milk has been elevated to a very, very high temperature so that all organisms in the milk have been killed, which does a really good job at creating a milk that will last a really long time. However, it also does a really good job of minimizing or destroying a lot or almost all of the really good beneficial ingredients in the milk. So you have the complete opposite of raw milk, which contains a lot of good healthy nourishing bacteria for our gut health and creates a milk product that has zero of those good bacteria and the high heat used to create ultra pasteurized milk really eliminates any value that you might be getting from purchasing organic milk to begin with. So the best option is going to be a raw milk option that has been fed a good, clean, healthy diet. But if you can't find that and you really want to stay away from any kind of GMOs, that would be the reason that you choose the organic option. But just know that the ultra pasteurization of that organic milk is going to eliminate a lot of the health benefits that you think you're getting. So it's really going to come down to a personal choice about what you think is best, organic versus conventional milk. I can see a benefit to both options here at the store, but really the very best option in my opinion is to go with a raw farm fresh milk if it's at all possible. Of course, none of this is intended to replace medical advice. This is just information that I have learned and put together throughout the years that I have been trying to find good, nourishing, healthy food for my family, and I hope that it's helpful for you as well. Last week when I was at Aldi, I told you the best options for flour really are not available there because really all they have is bleached enriched white flour and so I told you that when we got to Walmart I would talk to you a little bit about some better options for flour. I really tried to prioritize an unbleached flour in my normal baking goods. The reason that I do that is because anytime you talk about bleaching something it's obvious that it's going to be removing good nourishing qualities of that food ingredient while changing it to at least a small degree which is something that I want to try to avoid if at all possible. This is my favorite go-to flour for any kind of baking recipe. It works really good for sourdough. It also is good in regular yeast breads, as well as biscuits, cookies, pie doughs, anything that you need to make with flour. This King Arthur unbleached all-purpose flour is going to be a really good option. If your family can handle it, this whole wheat flour is also gonna be a really good option. Talk about making your 
sourdough starter really bloom and grow this is going to be great for that but it's also going to be really good for your digestive system if you can get your family on board with eating 100% whole grain biscuits or cookies it's really going to be a good option they used to have an organic great value unbleached flour here I don't see it anymore so I don't know if they're just out or if that's been discontinued but there are a lot of good options available here at Walmart in the baking aisle let's talk a little bit about the good sweetener options last week I showed you that Aldi carries this all-natural cane sugar it's a really good option and something that I almost always have in my pantry it's a much better alternative than just the regular white sugar because it's going to have some more minerals and vitamins included in it that have been taken out of the regular white sugar that we're also familiar with. If you want to go a step higher in the nutritional value, you can go to turbinado sugar. You can see by the dark color of this cane sugar, it is going to have an even greater amount of nutrition vitamins, minerals included in this sugar as opposed to the cane sugar that I showed you a moment ago. One thing is this is much larger grains so you're gonna have to take that into consideration if you use it in your baking goods just melt it a little in some warm liquid whatever you're cooking and that should be able to take care of any of the grittiness that you might find otherwise. I know everybody knows about sweet and low and I think some people still choose sweet and low because they're afraid of the calories and sugar or maybe because of diabetes you have to try to control the amount of sugar that you take in on a daily basis this is not a good healthy choice at all it is completely made in a laboratory there's nothing natural about this or any other kind of artificial sweetener hence the name artificial so I think it would be much better for our health if we tried to avoid all kinds of these artificial sweeteners if you are concerned about the glycemic index of a particular sugar or sweetener what about stevia this is a really good choice this is an organic stevia that is only stevia no other additives and this goes a long way in this small container, there's 1,000 servings, and I guarantee you that it will sweeten your coffee or tea just as good as sweet and low without any of the health risks. So check out this version. You can also find it on Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description below to help you find that. But this is a really good alternative to all of those artificial sweeteners they also come in different smaller packets to help you with the transportability of it so you might want to give this a try too finally one of my very favorite sweeteners is this coconut sugar i love coconut sugar in my coffee it is so good and it is a very low glycemic index food so if you are concerned about diabetes or pre-diabetes this is a really good option to keep all of your foods low on that glycemic index scale while still giving yourself some really good sweet options. Walmart also is a really good place to get your cooking oils. Just like Aldi, there are a lot of options that are not going to be very nutritious for us and are going to be very high in GMOs. But when you look up a little bit higher, you can find a lot of good options. Again, avocado oil is a really good choice for a high heat, nutritious cooking oil, an ingredient to make different salad dressings. I really enjoy using this refined coconut oil. And while it is a refined oil, it doesn't leave any kind of flavor in your foods whereas the unrefined coconut oil is going to give everything a little bit of a coconut flavor which my family is not really a huge fan of on most recipes so I stick with the coconut oil it's going to be expeller pressed and naturally refined so there's no chemicals involved in the refining process they have a lot of options when it comes to 
olive oil. Of course, an organic option that is single source is gonna be the best option, but olive oil in general is gonna be a really good option for your cooking needs. So find the best quality that you can afford with your food budget, and that will be the perfect option. Here we are at the juice aisle at Walmart, and I know that juice might be a little bit of a controversial subject. So is juice a good healthy option to include in our family's grocery budget or not? Uh, I think that that really depends on you and on your family and on your family's needs. But as far as my family goes, I do purchase a small amount of juice each month because I know that Especially Lane is not willing to eat a lot of the regular whole food options of the vegetables and fruits. So allowing him to get some of the benefits of the fruit without having to eat the entire thing is a win. So I do allow him to have 100% apple juice and I sometimes will add some cranberry juice to increase his urinary health as we are beginning to potty train. A couple of pointers that I like to go by when I'm choosing a fruit juice for my family would be making sure it's 100% fruit juice and there's no added ingredients. Also, you will see that some fruit juices have added water. So try to check the nutrition label and see is it 100% fruit